All right, good afternoon, everyone. I am Councilman Rafael Salamanca, Chair of the Subcommittee on Planning, Dispositions, and Concessions. Welcome, everyone, to today's hearing. Uh, today, I'm joined by Councilmember Andy Cohen, uh, Councilmember Mark Traeger, and Councilmember Carlos Menchaca. Today, we will hold hearings on 18 items. The first four items, LUs 668, 669, 670, and 671, are applications for tax exemptions pursuant to the private housing finance law in Councilmember Menchaca's district. The next item, LU672, TMN904 cluster in Councilmember Perkins District is an application to amend a previously granted UDAP approval to add a property and to change from a general municipal law tax exemption to a private housing finance law tax exemption. LU673, Lexington Gardens 2 in the Speakers District is a correction to a previous approved UDAP to reflect the current project. The remaining 12 items, LUs 656 through 667, are applications in various council members' districts for tax exemptions pursuant to the private housing finance law. These are known as the POMP applications because they are applications for tax exemptions for properties that were required in REM by the City of New York when disposed of through the private owner's management program. Uh, the first items are LUs 668, uh, 20175423 HAK, LU669, 20175439 HAK, LU670, 20175424 HAK, and LU671, 20175425 HAK. The Neighborhood Stabilization Association 1 and 2 applications. The 6th Avenue Rehab 1 application and the Sunset Park Housing Associates application. These applications are for 30 years tax exemptions to preserve existing rental housing in Community, community District 7 in Brooklyn. And with that, I'm going to let uh, Council Member Menchaca make a statement. Thank you, Chair, and thank you to HPD and the members uh, representing the, the ownership who are here as well. Um, I, I, all I want to say is just thank you for the hard work uh, on this tax exemption application. Uh, it should be said that so much effort is going into this uh, larger question about how we create and maintain affordability in our neighborhoods. This is one of those things that doesn't always get noticed, uh, but this action today through the subcommittee later the land use committee and then the city council will provide for 400 plus units 408 to be exact in eight different buildings to have uh, more and continued affordability through the next 30 years that is not something uh, to just brush away this is a major major moment for our community in sunset park so i want to say thank you for all the hard work uh, and look forward forward to the support throughout the rest of the votes in the city council uh, thank you council member uh, now, I, uh, now I am now opening up the public hearings to LU 668, 669, 670, and 671. Uh, Mr. Speaker, please introduce yourself. Good afternoon, Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Jordan Press. I'm from HPD's Government Affairs Unit. Land use numbers 668 to 671 consist of four portfolio portfolios located in exemption areas within Brooklyn Council District 38 that were developed upon approval by the Board of Estimate in the early 1980s. There are a total of 42 buildings with 408 units that were originally created as HUD Section 8 multifamily rental housing for low-income families. Land use numbers 668, 669, and 670 are owned by limited partnerships under Article 5 of the Private Housing Finance Law, while land use number 671 is owned by a limited partnership but is not an Article 5 housing company. Together, the four clusters are referred to as a Sunset Park portfolio, and the buildings will be conveyed to a new HDFC to new HDFC entities under Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law. Land use number 668 is currently owned by Neighborhood Stabilization Associates 1 and consists of 24 multiple dwellings with 185 units plus two superintendent's units um, located at, bear with me, Block 764, lot 36, block 799, lot 25, block 809, lots 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, block 816, lots 36 and 37, block 817, lots 1 and 5, block 821, lot 12, block 830, lots 33 and 35, block 832, lot 51, and block 839, lot 6. Land use number 669 is currently owned by Neighborhood Stabilization Associates 2 and consists of 13 buildings with 146 units plus two superintendents 
located at Block 723, Lot 67, Block 744, Lot 59, Block 775, Lot 65 and 80, Block 783, Lot 21, Block 784, Lots 38, 39, 45, and 47, and Block 814, Lot 20. Land use number 670 is currently owned by 6th Avenue Rehab 1 and consists of two buildings with 44 units and one superintendent's unit located at Block 816, Lot 42. Land use number 671 is, located, is currently owned by Sunset Park Housing Associates and consists of three buildings with 28 units at Block 821, Lot 71 and 72, and Block 792, Lot 24. The unit breakdown across land use numbers 668 to 671 include five superintendent's units, as well as 17 studios, 159 one-bedrooms, 193 two-bedrooms, and 35 three-bedroom apartments with four vacancies. The buildings are in good condition and rehabilitation will occur as needed. The HUD mortgages were satisfied a number of years ago and the Article 5 will expire in five years. The units are marked up to market and not under any New York State rent regulation. At this time, the housing assistance program contracts, which begin expiring this year, are the only regulating documents that restrict rents up to 30% of household income. Therefore, the sponsor and HPD have been working together to determine the best approach to maintaining continued affordability of these low-income rental units. As such, the sponsor seeks council approval to voluntarily terminate their status as Article 5 housing companies, terminate current tax benefits under Article 5, and obtain new tax exemptions under Article 11 for land use numbers 668, 669, and 670. Additionally, HPD is before the council seeking approval to obtain Article 11 tax benefits for land use number 671, given that the building does not have tax benefits at the present time. Under Article 11, the sponsor will be required to enter into regulatory agreements, establishing certain controls on the properties, and the tax benefits will be in place for 30 years, coinciding with the agreement. Separately, the sponsor will enter into a new Section 8 HAP contract with HUD for an additional 20 years. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Jordan Press. I uh, would like to recognize that, that we've been joined by Council Member Darlene Mealy. Uh, with that, are there any questions from the committee? Yes. Uh, thank you. You said that the buildings were in good condition. Are, th are there open violations? Um, for the most part, the violation counts are very low across the buildings. The one building that has um, a higher violation count um, has filed a dismissal request with HPD uh, to remove those violations. Um, and I would say that as a condition of closing with HPD, that we require that the owner has presented to HPD a plan to remove any existing violations. There are times where, um, you know, it might be difficult for them to access one apartment where a tenant doesn't want to provide access, and so violations remain on the unit. We wouldn't want to hold up the entire project Later. because of that. Um, but overall, the uh, violation counts are not too bad. Uh, and uh, what are the current rents? More, what's the range? I guess, or just a, a flavor of what the current rents are. Um, a flavor would be a studio for eleven $1 hundred dollars, a one bedroom for uh, thirteen eighty to fifteen eighty, a three bedroom for twenty two hundred. And after this goes into effect, the rents will stay in the same flavor. <laughs> yes, yes, okay. under under the new half contract with Section Eight. Okay. Uh, uh, congratulations uh, to my colleague, and thank you very much. All right. Any other questions from the committee? No? All right. Um, are there any more members of the public who wish to testify? No, seeing none, I will now close public hearings on LU 668, 669, 670, and 671.
The next item is, T, is TMN 904 cluster LU672. This project was approved in 2006, but there have been some changes to the project. An additional property is being added to the disposition area, and the tax exemption will now be under the private housing finance law rather than the general municipal law. I am now opening up the public hearing in LU672. Um, the, the speakers can just introduce themselves. Again, my name is Jordan Press from HPD's Government Affairs Unit. I'm joined by Cheryl Igodaro from Precise Management, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And Heidi Anderson from HPD's Preservation uh, uh, Property Disposition and Finance Unit. Uh, land use number 672 consists of an, an amendment to a project previously approved by the Council on November 29th, 2016, and is known as the TMN 904 cluster. The original project is located at 410 to 418 West 128th Street, 116 to 118 West 129th Street, 111 West 131st Street, and 157 West 122nd Street. The project is being amended to add one city-owned building located at 120 West 129th Street, which is adjacent and shares the same tax lot as 116 to 118 West 129th Street. The additional building was once part of the ten Tenant Interim Lease or TIL program, but was returned back to HPD Central Management Inventory upon the termination that the building will not be a viable cooperative. The amendment also seeks city council approval for a real property tax exemption under Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law, superseding the previous real estate tax exemption approved under UDAP on November 29, 2016. Additionally, because the sponsor is seeking Article 11 tax benefits, the sponsor has changed from MLG 904 Development LLC to MLG 904 Housing Development Fund Corporation. With the addition of the fifth city-owned building plus two privately owned buildings, the TMN 904 cluster will now consist of a total of seven buildings with 125 dwelling units that will be rehabilitated to provide affordable rental units. The amended project will be comprised of a mix of unit types, including 11 studios, 69 one-bedrooms, 28 two-bedrooms, 15 three-bedrooms, and two four-bedroom apartments. Existing tenants will be offered preferential leases at the higher of existing rents or restructured at 30% AMI up to 47% AMI. Upon vacancy, the rents for incoming tenants will be set at 60% of AMI. Council Member Perkins has been briefed, and we look forward to ongoing conversations with his office uh, uh, in order for him to lend his support. Thank you. Are there any questions from members of the committee? Councilmember Mealy? Are you saying that Bill, uh, Councilmember Perkins have not approved it as of yet? I oh, there you are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just want to know. I just Councilmember, if you can just. I got to know. Have a seat. <laughs> For the record, we'd like to recognize uh, Councilmember Perkins. Sorry. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I just. Uh, want to uh, say that I have really nothing to say at this moment about the, the, the legislation that, uh, uh, you know, it looks like something that we'll have no problem with, but um, I need to uh, do diligence in terms of some of the tenants, and I wanted to just take a moment to make sure that they are as comfortable as possible. We haven't had that opportunity yet. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I don't think there'll be much of a delay, but just... Uh, Are you for the project? Uh, or can we uh, hold uh, it over? No. I wouldn't mind if you held it over. The project, I believe, is going to be held over. Oh, okay. Yes. Thank okay. you. Thank you. All right, thank and you. Again, I, I appreciate your indulgence, but um, as, as old as we are, we're kind of new to <laughs> some of it, and we always like to make sure we touch base with the folks that are at stake. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Perkins. Are there any uh, members in the public who wish to testify? I see none. I will now close the public hearing on LU 672. The next item is LU 673, Lexington Gardens Number 2. This project was approved in 2016, but there have been changes to the affordability mix, so an amendment is being sought. I am now opening up the public hearing to LU 673. 
Uh, Mr. Speaker, please introduce yourselves. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Jordan Press from HPD's Government Affairs Unit. Land use number 673 consists of a proposed amendment to the Lexington Gardens 2 project previously approved by the Council on November 29, 2016. Lexington Gardens 2 is located at 1461 Park Avenue in Manhattan Council District 8 and is to be developed under HPD's Mix and Match program. The building will be comprised of approximately 399 rental units plus one unit for a superintendent. This amended submission seeks a change to um, the affordability mix. More specifically, the project is changing rents um, to uh, approximately um, 20 percent of the units at 30 percent of AMI, 29 percent of the units at 50 percent of AMI, 10 percent of the units at 60 percent of AMI, 20 percent of the units at 80 percent of AMI, and 20 percent of the units at 125 percent of AMI. Lexington Gardens 2 includes a city-owned lot and two adjacent private lots owned by the sponsor. The private parcels will not be part of the UDAP designation. There are also slight changes in the square footage for the non-residential portions. The proposed development will include 37,461 square feet of community facility space with approximately 35,000 square feet for Northside Child Development Center and the balance for another community organization. Approximately 3,800 square feet of retail and 26 thousand square feet of parking um, will be provided, approximately 17,000 of which is replacement parking for the NYPD. The project will include 10,822 square feet of open space that will service the school and residents of the new building. This open space will, will be located on the area of the private parcels for the final development. The project includes the creation of a large-scale development plan to enable the intended building massing and design. Additionally, the project will include mandatory inclusionary housing. Uh, the speaker, uh, Melissa Mark the Burrito, has indicated her, her support for the project. Thank you, uh, Mr. Press. Any uh, questions from members of the committee? Councilmember Mealy? I just would like to know um, how many Section 8 vouchers, how many units will it be? And I'm kind of um, taken back. I know that y'all made corrections, but we would love to see it in this package. Before we vote on stuff, we should at least see the exact what we're voting on and not the old one. So could you give me the breakdown of that again? How many units will have Section 8? Because it say eight units yeah, here. That, that's correct. Eight units will have Section 8 vouchers. That's it? That's right. The, the rents are going to be the rents are going to be very low, um, you know, uh, across the majority of this project. And how many 8% AMI? Units? 20% of the project is at 80% of AMI. How many units will be that? 80. 80? Okay. Okay, I would love for it to be more Section 8 also, and I know the speaker is for this, but at this economic time when we need people to have apartments, we definitely need more Section 8. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Council Member. Any other questions from members of the committee? All right, I am now opening up. Uh, are there any more members who wish to testify? All right, seeing none, I will now close the public hearing on the LU 673. The next item is LU 656, Pomp 1 in Councilmember Torres and Councilmember Cabrera's district. These properties are located at Block 3158, Lot 41 and 43, and Block 3321, Lot 15 in the Bronx. I am now opening up the public hearing on LU656. Mr. Speaker, please introduce yourself. Mr. Chairman, is this 656 through 667? So, um, Mr. Press, we're going to do them individually. Okay. Land use number 656 consists of, um, I'm sorry, my name is Jordan Press from HPD's Government Affairs Unit. Land use number 656 um, uh, is known as Pomp 1, located in council districts 14 and 15, and is comprised of 54 residential units in three buildings. Known as the Pomp Portfolio, these formerly city-owned buildings were originally approved for development by the Board of Estimate and City Council between 1988 and 1993. 
under the Private Ownership Management Program, aka also known as POMP, the city disposed of the properties to private landlords selected through a request for qualifications who managed a minimum of 100 units. The program required a 12-month trial period during which major repairs needed to remove housing code violations using HPD subsidies were completed. At the end of the trial period, the managers had the option of purchasing the building as rentals from the city for $2,500 per unit. The buildings are currently owned by separate corporate entities, but with a similar ownership structure, which is controlled by Langsam Property. As part of the land use actions, the properties will be conveyed to housing development fund corporations formed under Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law. The buildings are in good condition and do not require major rehabilitation. The buildings have a mixture of unit types, including studios, one, two, three, and four bedroom units, as well as one five bedroom apartment in the portfolio. AMI levels for existing residents average below 60% and rents average $700 for a studio to $1,236 for a four bedroom unit. At this time, HPD is before the council seeking Article 11 tax exemption uh, for land use number 656 for a period of 30 years that will coincide with the regulatory agreement. The council members have shown their support. Uh, thank you, Mr. Press. And it's my understanding that Council Member Torres and Council Member Cabrera are in favor of this project. Are there any questions from members of the committee? No? Okay. Are there any more members of the public who wish to testify? Uh, seeing none, I will now close the public hearing on the LU656. The next item is LU657, Pump 2, in my district. This property is located at Block 2948, Lot 20 in the Bronx. I, I am now opening up the public hearing on LU657. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, land use number 657 is known as uh, Pump 2, located in Council District 17, and is comprised of 47 residential units in one building. Again, this is known as part of the Pump portfolio which is uh, made up of formerly city-owned buildings that were originally approved for development by the Board of Estimate and City Council between 1988 and 1993. Under the POMP program, the city disposed of properties to private landlords selected through an RFQ with, who managed a minimum of 100 units. The program required a 12-month trial period during which major repairs needed to remove the housing code violations using HPD subsidies were completed. At the end of the trial period, the managers had the option of purchasing the buildings as rentals from the city for $2,500 per unit. The buildings are currently owned by separate corporate entities, but with a similar ownership structure, which is controlled by Langsam Property. As part of the land, land use action, the property will be conveyed to a housing development fund corporation formed under Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law. At this time, HPD is before the council seeking Article 11 tax exemption for land use number 657. Thank you. I did meet with uh, Langsam Properties, and they did give me a letter um, with stipulations that they agree to add surveillance cameras to their buildings, which do not have any surveillance cameras. Uh, I've worked with Langsam for some time now, and I find them to be responsible landlords. Uh, so I, I, I'm in favor of this project. Are there any questions from members of the committee? No? All right, thank you. Are there any members of the public who wish to testify? Seeing none, I will now close public hearings LU657. Let me wrap this up. All right. The next item is LU658, Palm 3 in my district. These properties are located in community boards 1 and 9 in the Bronx. I am now opening up the public hearings on LU658. Is this just 658 or 658 and 659 collectively? This is, uh, well, we can do 658 and 659 if you choose. Okay. So land use number 658 and 659 is known as the Pump 3 uh, portfolio located in council districts, council districts 16 and 17 and is comprised of 442 residential units and 14 commercial units in 12 buildings. Known as the POM portfolio, these formerly city-owned buildings were originally approved for development by the Board of Estimate and City Council between 1988 and 1993. Under POM, the city disposed of these properties to private landlords, selected through an RFQ who managed a minimum of 100 units. The program required a 12-month trial period during which major repairs needed to remove housing code violations using HPD subsidies were completed. At the end of the trial period, the manager had the option of purchasing the building as rentals 
from the city for $2,500 per unit. The buildings are currently owned by separate corporate entities, but with a similar ownership structure, which is controlled by Langsam Property. As part of the land use action, the properties will be conveyed to uh, Housing Development Fund Corporations uh, formed under Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law. At this time, HPD is before the Council seeking Article 11 tax exemption for land use numbers 658 and 659 uh, for a period of 30 years that will coincide with the regulatory agreement. Thank you, uh, Mr. Press. I'm going to call on the Council Member Menchaca, who has a statement. Thank you, uh, Mr. Press. Earlier, uh, I just want to come back to the applications from Sunset Park really quick. Uh, and you mentioned uh, three different levels of income or, or uh, rent rentals associated with those properties, uh, the 408 apartments. Yeah. So as you get to those, um, I, I want to remind everybody, those, those rents sounded really high. Uh, and it didn't have the full context of the Section 8 vouchers that this program is connected to as well. That's so right. can you walk us through that, that whole piece? Because I think it's an important yes, piece. Yes, sure. So um, the, rent, uh, the rent that is charged to the unit is the rent that is paid to the owner. However, uh, by virtue of being connected to a HUD Section 8 HAP contract, Housing Assistance uh, Program contract, um, Tenants are only paying 30% of their income towards rent, and the rest is uh, federally subsidized. Great. So that's an important thing to talk about when we we're preserving those, yes. those rents. Uh, we're preserving the Section 8 program that's as right. well, as, uh, uh, and the affordability comes to the Section 8. That, uh, that's uh, that's, so that's an important thing to yeah, talk so about uh, in this. And then also on the, on the violations, I want to note as well that the owners, uh, Fairstead, uh, has, has come to us with with a list of, of, of items that were pending or for review um, on on issues with, with tenants as well. So that we're going to be working with them and hoping we can work with you to figure out what those violations are and make that happen. Yeah, and I would hope that if there are any particular issues of concern related to the violations that you would let us know so that we can um, be sure to bring it up with them prior to closing. Great. Thanks for clearing that up. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Are there any questions from members of the committee? Uh, just for clarity, LU-658, it's in uh, my council district, which I'm in favor of and is being voted on today. Uh, but LU-659 is in council member Vanessa Gibson's district, and uh, it's, uh, this item is being laid over um, for the next meeting. Now, are there any members of the public who wish to testify? Seeing none, I will now close the public hearings on LU-658 and 659. The next item is LU660, Pump 4, and speak up Mark Rito's district. These properties are located in Community Board 1 in the Bronx. I am now opening up the public hearings on LU660. So, Speaker, please introduce yourself. Good afternoon. My name is Jordan Press from HPD's Government Affairs Unit. Land use number 660 is known as the Pump 4 portfolio located in Council District 8 and is comprised of 145 residential units in three buildings. Known as the Pump Portfolio, these formerly city-owned buildings were orig originally approved for development by the Board of Estimate and City Council between 1988 and 1993. Under Pump, the city disposed of the properties to private landlords selected through an RFQ who managed a minimum of 100 units. The program required a 12-month trial period during which major repairs needed to remove housing code violations using HPD subsidies were completed. At the end of the trial period, the managers had the option of purchasing the building as rentals from the city for $2,500 per unit. The buildings are currently owned by separate corporate entities, but with a similar ownership structure, which is controlled by Langsam Property. As part of the land use actions, the properties will be conveyed to housing development fund corporations formed under Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law. At this time, HPD is before the council seeking Article 11 tax exemption for land use number 660 for a period of 30 years that will coincide with the regu regulatory agreement. Uh, thank you, Mr. Press. Are there any uh, questions from members of the committee? No? All right. Are there any more members of the public who wish to testify? Seeing none, I will now close the public hearings on LU 660. The next item is LU 661, Pump 5 in my district. These properties are located in Community Board 9 in the Bronx and LU 662, also in Pump 5 in Council Member Cabrera's, Gibson's, and Palmer's districts. These properties are located in Community Boards 4, 7, and 9 in the Bronx. I am now opening up the public hearings on LU 661 and 662. Uh, Mr. Speaker, please introduce yourself. Good afternoon. My name is Jordan Press from HPD's Government Affairs Unit. 
Land use number 661 and 662 is known as the POMP 5 portfolio located in council districts 14, 16, 17, and 18 and is comprised of 216 units and seven buildings. Known as the POMP portfolio, these formerly city-owned buildings were originally approved for development by the Board of Estimate and City Council between 1988 and 1993. Under POMP, the city disposed of the properties to private landlords selected through an RFQ who managed a minimum of 100 units. The program required a 12-month trial period during which major repairs needed to remove housing code violations using HPD subsidies were completed. At the end of the trial period, the managers had the option of purchasing the building as rentals from the city for $2,500 per unit. The buildings are currently owned by separate corporate entities but with a similar ownership structure which is controlled by Langsam Property. As part of the land use actions, the properties will be conveyed to housing development fund corporations formed under Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law. At this time, HBD is before the council seeking Article 11 tax exemption for land use number 661 and 662 uh, for a period of 30 years that will coincide with the regulatory agreement. Thank you. Are there any questions from members of the committee? No? All right, just for clarity, LU 661, it's in my council district. Um, and again, it's another project that I'm being supportive of. LU 662 is being laid over as well for the next committee. Are there any members of the public who wish to testify? Seeing none, I will now close the public hearings on LU 661 and LU 662. The next item is LU 663, Palm 6, and Councilmember Torres and Councilmember Gibson's district. These properties are located in Community Boards 4 and 5 in the Bronx. I am now opening up the public hearings on LU 663. Good afternoon. My name is Jordan Press from HPD's Government Affairs Unit. Land use number 663 is known as the Pump 6 portfolio located in Council Districts 15 and 16 and is comprised of 91 units and 5 buildings. Known as the Pump portfolio, these formerly city-owned buildings were originally approved for development by the Board of Estimate and City Council between 1998 and 1993. Under POMP, the city disposed of the properties to private landlords selected through an RFQ who managed a minimum of 100 units. The program required a 12-month trial period during which major repairs needed to remove housing code violations using HPD subsidies were completed. At the end of the trial period, the managers had the option of purchasing the building as rentals from the city for $2,500 per unit. The buildings are currently owned by separate corporate entities but with a similar ownership structure which is controlled by Langsam Property. As part of the land use actions, the properties will be conveyed to housing development fund corporations formed under Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law. At this time, HPD is before the Council seeking Article 11 tax exemptions for uh, land use number 663 for a period of 30 years, which will coincide with the regulatory agreement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Press. Any members of the committee wish to testify? No? All right, just for the record, this... Um Item LU663 as well as being laid over. Are there any members of the public who wish to testify? Seeing none, I will now close public hearing LU663. The next item is LU664, Palm 7 in Councilmember Cabrera's district. This property is located at Block 2844, Lot 33 in the Bronx. I am now opening up the public hearing on LU664. Good afternoon. My name is Jordan Press from HPD's Government Affairs Unit. Land use number 664 is known as the POMP 7 portfolio and is located in Council District 14 and is comprised of 54 units in one building. Known as the POMP portfolio, this formerly city-owned building was originally approved for development by the Board of Estimate and City Council. Under the POMP program, the city disposed of properties to private landlords selected through an RFQ who managed a minimum of 100 units. The program required a 12-month trial period during which major repairs needed to remove housing code violations using HPD subsidies were completed. At the end of the trial period, the managers had the option of purchasing the buildings as rentals from the city for $2,500 per unit. The buildings are currently owned by separate corporate entities but with a similar ownership structure which is controlled by Langsam Property. As part of the land use actions, the properties will be conveyed to housing development fund corporations formed under Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law. At this time, HPD is before the council seeking Article 11 tax exemption for land use number 664 for a period of 30 years that will coincide with the regulatory agreement. Thank you, Mr. Press. And uh, it's my understanding that Council Member Cabrera is in favor of this project. Uh, any members of the committee would like to speak? No? Are there any more members of the public who wish to testify? Seeing none, I will now close the public hearings on LU 664. The next item is LU665 and LU666, Palm 6 in my district. 
I'm sorry, Palm 8 in my district. These properties are located in Community Board 9 in the Bronx and LU 666, also known as Palm 8, uh, for properties in Councilmember Gibson's, Palmer's, and Melissa Mark Riverito's districts. These properties are located in Community Boards 1, 4, and 9 in the Bronx. I am now opening up the public hearings on LU 665 and LU 666. Good afternoon, my name is Jordan Press from HPD's Government Affairs Unit. Land use numbers 665 and 666 is known as the POMP 8 portfolio and is located in council districts 8, 16, 17, and 18 and is comprised of 354 units and seven buildings. Known as the POMP portfolio, these formerly city-owned buildings were originally approved for development by the Board of Estimate and City Council between 1988 and 1993. Under the POMP program, the city disposed of the properties to private landlords selected through an RFQ who managed a minimum of 100 units. The program required a 12-month trial period during which major repairs needed to remove housing code violations using HPD subsidies were completed. At the end of the trial period, the managers had the option of purchasing the building as rentals from the city for $2,500 per unit. The buildings are currently owned by separate corporate entities but with a similar ownership structure, which is controlled by Langston Property. As part of the land use action, the properties will be co conveyed to housing development fund corporations formed under Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law. At this time, HPD is before the Council seeking Article 11 tax exemptions for land use numbers 665 and 666 for a period of 30 years that will coincide with the regulatory agreement. Thank you, Mr. Press. Any uh, questions from members of the committee? Uh, just for the record, uh, LU665 is being voted on today. Uh, LU666 is being laid over as well. Are, are there any members of the public who wish to testify? Seeing none, I will now close public hearings LU665 and LU666. The next item is LU667, Pump 9 in Councilmember Cabrera's district. This property is located in Community Board 5 in the Bronx. I am now opening up the public hearings on LU667. Good afternoon. My name is Jordan Press from HPD's Government Affairs Unit. Uh, land use number 667 is known as the Pump 9 portfolio located in Council District 14 and is comprised of 59 units in one building. Known as the Pump uh, portfolio, the city, formerly city-owned building was originally approved for development by the Board of Estimate and City Council between 1988 and 1993. Under the private ownership management program, the city disposed of the properties to private landlords selected through a request for qualifications who managed a minimum of 100 units. The program required a 12-month trial period during which major repairs needed to remove housing code violations using HPD subsidies were completed. At the end of the trial period, the managers had the option of purchasing the building as rentals from the city for $2,500 per unit. The buildings are currently owned by separate corporate entities but with a similar ownership structure, which is controlled by Langston Property. As part of the land use actions, the properties will be conveyed to housing development fund corporations formed under Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law. At this time, HPD is before the Council seeking Article 11 tax exemption for land use number 667 for a period of 30 years that will coincide with the regulatory agreement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Press. Uh, any questions from members of the committee? No? Are there any more members of the public who wish to testify? Seeing none, I will now close the public hearings on LU 667. Today, we'll be laying over LU 659, 660, 662, 663, 666, and 672. We will be voting on the following items, which have the support of the local council members, LU 5, 656, 657, 658, 661, 664, 665, 667, 668, 669, 670, 671, and 673. Council, please call the roll on a vote to approve. Chair Salamanca. Aye or no. Council Member Mealy. Aye or no. Council Member Cohen. Aye. Council Member Traeger. Aye. By a vote of four in the affirmative, zero negatives, and zero abstentions, the land use items are approved and referred to the full land use committee. Thank you. We will need. We will leave the role open. Um, but I would also like to thank members of the public, my colleagues, council, land use staff for attending today's hearing. Thank you.